Hey, NAC fans, how's everything going? Hopefully everything's going great. A lot of exciting games last week with some big wins, some big upsets. Uh, we'll start off with the midweek games. Um, January 25th, last week, um, Wisconsin Lutheran traveled to MSOE. Uh, MSOE snapped a six-game winning streak by Wisconsin Lutheran with a 78-69 win at home. Uh, MSOE led by Matt Kermsey with 29 or 22 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, and 0 turnovers. Travis Ballard continuing his strong play with 15 points and 8 rebounds. And Michael Petroff, um, a great all-around game, 13 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists. Uh, no surprise here, Wisconsin Lutheran led by Andrew Brunick with 22 points and 11 rebounds. Uh, MSOE outscored Wisconsin Lutheran 40-26 to in the paint and forced 20 Wisconsin Lutheran turnovers. WLC led at the half 39-33 before being outscored 45-30 in the second half. On the night, Wisconsin Lutheran shot 46% from the field, 30% from the three, 63% from the free throw line, while MSOE shot 49% from the field, 19% from the free throw or three-point line, and 71% from the free throw line. Dominican earning their first sweep of Aurora. Since NAC, since before NAC play started, um, Dominican got a 77-62 win at home over Spartans. Um, they were led by Jackson Smith with 22 points, Dennis Had Handy with 16, Tyler Guest with another double double, 15 points and 13 rebounds, Luke McDermott with seven rebounds and seven assists. AU was led by Bailey Vance with 16 points and seven rebounds, and Michael Finley rounded out the double digit scoring for the Spartans with 10 points. Aurora was just 14 of 28 from the free throw line and committed 15 turnovers. Um, Dominican had 29 made field made field goals and 18 assists. On the evening, Aurora shot 36% from the field, 20% from the three-point line, and 50% from the free throw line. While Dominican shot 46% from the field, 34% from the three-point line, and 60% from the free throw line. Edgewood took care of the Muskies at home with a 71-69 win. Um, got a big game from Ben Seafield with 22 points and 7 rebounds. Jake Nagus and Ryan Buss both with 11 points. Um, Buss with a double-double as well uh, with 11 rebounds. Avery Lyons chipped in with 10 for the Eagles. Uh, Lakeland was led by Zach Hosenstein with 16, followed by Trenton Nickel with 15, Isaac Anderson with 14, and Jagan Pegues with 12. Edgewood controlled the paint, 48-26. Uh, to 26. On the evening, Lakeland shot 37% from the field, 33% from the three-point line, 79% from the free throw line. Edgewood shot 44% from the field, 28% from the three-point line, and 53% from the free throw line. Big home win, an upset in the NAC last week. Marion snapped a three-game losing streak with a 70-64 to win at home against IIT. Uh, Marion is led by Blake Pedron with 17, followed by Josh Street with 14 points and 8 rebounds. Um, Dylan Miner off the bench scored 10. IIT was led by Milos Dulajic with 18 in points and 6 rebounds, followed by Muh Ahmad Muhammad with 14 points. Max Izataki with another double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. And Miles Curry uh, increasing his minutes play uh, since returning from injury, I am guessing, uh, with 12 points off the bench. Uh, despite winning the rebounding battle 31-23, IIT only scored four second-chance points. Uh, Marion Bench outscored IIT 26-18. IIT went on the road and shot 43% from the field, 27% from the three-point line, 82% from the free-throw line, while Marion shot 49% from the field, 52% from the three-point line, and 85% from the free-throw line. Rockford traveled to Benedictine. Uh, Benedictine came away with a 79-61 win at home. Uh, the Eagles were led by senior Eric Griego with a double-double, 16 points and 15 rebounds, followed by Nick Kosage with 19 on 5 of 9, th five of nine shooting from the three-point line, Kyle Gravener with 13, and Cade Ellington with 12 off the bench. The Regents were led by Jamar Rivera with 16, followed by Nate Shedd with 12, Brandon Emmerich with 11, and Randy Sajanga with 10. Uh, bench points were in BU's favor, 21 to 9. Uh, Rockford shot 35% from the field, 30% from the three-point line, and 78% from the free throw line. 
while Ben Dickney shot 50% from the field, 41% from the three-point line, and 69% from the free throw line. On Saturday, CUC traveled to IIT. IIT bounced back with a 92-56 win at home over the Cougars. Max Izataki with another dominating performance, 16 points and 15 rebounds. Miles Curry with 25 points, Ahmad Muhammad 14, and Milos Dilajic with 12. CUC was led by Landon Gladney with 12 points, followed by Rashawn Amos with 10. Uh, points in the paint, no surprise here um, in favor of IIT with 32-14 advantage. And then points off of turnovers, 25 points to just 11 by the Cougars. Um, Cougars committed 23 turnovers to so just 9 for IIT, took care of the basketball. Um, Concordia shot 43% from the field, 38% from the three, and 56% from the free throw line. IIT shot an outstanding 54% from the field, 50% from the three, and 90% from the free throw line. Benedicting held on for a 90-84 win over Edgewood on the road. Um, BU is led by Colin Murgle with 23 points off the bench, followed by Eric Grigo with 22 points and 13 rebounds for another double-double, and Kyle Gravener with 12. E Edgewood was led by Ryan Buss with 16, Ben Seafield with 15, Jake Nagas with 14, Avery Lyons with 13, and Max Fernholz with 12 off the bench. 42-24 to advantage in the paint for Benedicting as well as 37-23 to 23 advantage in bench points. Edgewood did score 20 points off of 14 Benedictine turnovers. BU won a rebounding battle 36-30. to 30. On the afternoon, Benedictine shot 59% from the field, 30% from the three, and 65% from the free throw line. Edgewood shot 48% from the field, 63% from the three, and 96% from the free throw line. Wisconsin Lutheran got back on track with a 96-63 win over Marion at home. Andrew Brudnick again paced Wisconsin Lutheran with 27 points, followed by Zach Zulliger with 19, Alex Van Crete with 16, and Drew Bernhagen with 11 off the bench for the Crusaders. Marion was led by Trenton Faust with, sorry, for the Warriors, Drew Bernhagen had 11 off the bench for the Warriors. Marion was led by Trenton Faust with 13, Josh Streeter with 11. Uh, points off turnovers were key, with the Wisconsin Lutheran scoring 30 points off of 16 Marion turnovers. Wisconsin Lutheran won the bat board's battle 40-27. to Marion shot 35% from the field, 29% from three, 81% from the free throw line. Wisconsin Lutheran shot 53% from the field, 46% from the three-point line, and 82% from the free throw line. Another tight battle between Concordia, Wisconsin, and Aurora. The Falcons took care of AU 82-75 for their fourth straight win on the season. Uh, Joey Zietlow with 21 points, seven rebounds. Brandon Keller with 15 points. Jared Jurz with the solid all-around game, 10 points, six rebounds, nine assists. And off the bench, Ole Lake and George with 12. And Grant Carrington with 11 for CU Dub. Um, AU is led by Will Hubes Rubes with 16, Michael Finley with 15, and Bailey Vance with another double double, 14 points and 15 rebounds. Pretty even basketball game in every uh, statistical category. Um, Concordia, Wisconsin shot 44% from the field, 31% from three, and 69% from the free throw line. Aurora shot 37% from the field, 21% from the three, and 65% from the free throw line. MSOE traveled to Lakeland, came away with a 90-79 win on the road, uh, pushes their winning streak to three in a row. Uh, MSOE was paced by Gabe Ware with 18, Travis Ballard with 17-6, and six, Michael Petroff and Matt Kermsey both with 15. Uh, Michael Petroff also grabbed seven rebounds for the Red Raiders. Lakeland was read by Br led by Brandon Rao off the bench with 18 points. Tylen Huff was 16 off the bench as well. Zach Hasenstein and Isaac Anderson both chipped in with 13 points, respectively. MSOE won the board's battle 40-27 and outscored the Muskies 46-30 in points in the paint. Uh, MSOE shot 56% from the field, 36% from the three-point line, and 73% from the free throw line. Lakeland shot 48% from the field, 41% from the three, and 50% from the free throw line. 
Regents held on for an overtime win over Dominican, 90 to 84. Um, Brandon Emmerich willed the Regents to a victory with 28 points, eight rebounds, four assists, and just one turnover. But it was a hustle plays down the stretch, both in regulation and overtime, uh, that proved to be crucial. Uh, Nate Shedd with 22 points and Ashton Singleton with 11. Jamar Rivera with a game high, 10 rebounds. Dominican got strong production from Jackson Smith, uh, continued his strong play with 19 points. Tyler Guest and Luke McDermott both with 16 points, and K.J. Redfield with 11 off the bench. Uh, Tyler Guest grabbed eight rebounds to lead the Dominican Stars. RU controlled the paint, outscoring the Stars 52-36, while rebounding Dominican 42-31 with 17 offensive rebounds, which led to 19 second-chance points for the Regents. Dominican shot 53% from the field, 35% from the three-point line and 77% from the free-throw line. Rockford shot 46% from the th field, 30% from the three-point line, and 79% from the free-throw line. More big games this week in NAC play. Uh, kicking off tomorrow night, January 21st, Aurora travels to Marion. Um, Dominican travels to Edgewood, IIT at MSOE, Concordia, Chicago at Benedictine, Lakeland at Concordia, Wisconsin, and Rockford at Wisconsin Lutheran. Uh, the big games tomorrow night, in my opinion, is IIT at MSOE. Both are playing much better basketball than they were in the early part of the season. Um, big game on the road for IIT. Again, if you want to put yourself in contention to get in an act tournament, you have to take care of business on the road, and this is a chance for IIT to do so in, in, against a team that they are competing. Uh, against to get into one of those spots for the NAC tournament. Um, yes, still a lot of games to play, but 10 games in, uh, you know, kind of running out of opportunities here. Um, Rockford at Wisconsin Lutheran. Rockford two games out of first place. Uh, Wisconsin Lutheran in a three-way tie uh, with Benedictine and Concordia, Wisconsin. So big games tomorrow night. And then on Friday, um, part of the Concordia Invitational Tournament, CU Dub is playing host Concordia Chicago. And then on Saturday, Concordia Wisconsin and Concordia Chicago will both play their second games of the CIT, um, either against Concordia of Ann Arbor or Concordia of Nebraska, depending on how everything shakes out on Friday between the two games. Marion travels to Lakeland. Benedictine at Dominican, Aurora at Wisconsin Lutheran, Rockford at IIT, and then Edgewood at MSOE. Big games, again, for a lot of teams to, to continue to separate themselves and other teams <coughs> to climb up in the standings uh, to get one of those six spots for the NAC tournament. So a lot of big games. Again, you can get a chance to either watch them live stream or follow live stats uh, which is great, and it's been awesome for me to be able to do so uh, to help with this podcast and get a good feel for all the teams in the NAC. Um, but all you have to do is just go to each athletic homepage and click on schedules, and they will all provide those um, links to do so, whether it's live streaming or live stats. Going to do add something different to this week's podcast. On Sunday... Um, I had posted on my Twitter that I felt like there was four legit NAC Player of the Year candidates uh, halfway through NAC play. Uh, we're 10 games in, uh, so we got 10 games left. Um, five weeks, uh, that's including this week. So before you know it, NAC fans, season's going to be over. You know, five weeks goes by fast, two games a week. Um, you know, it, it's, it's crunch time now. You know, a lot of teams... Uh, are fighting for one of those few spots, uh, but it's also still plenty of chance for some of these teams on the outside right now to, you know, move up in the standings. And a couple of teams that might be uh, at the top or, or in right now, if the season were to end. You know, it, it's such a uh, fine line right now in, in the conference standings. But uh, me personally, I, I feel like right now through ten games, there are four legit NAC Player of the Year candidates. Um, this is in no order. Uh, I don't. I don't think one necessarily ranks over higher than the other, um, right now because there's still a lot of games left. But midway through, we're going to start out with one of my 
four NAC Player of the Year candidates, Andrew Brunick, uh, 6'4", senior guard from Wisconsin Lutheran, um, averaging 22.1 points per game, which is best in the NAC and 29th in all of NCAA Division Three. Averages 7.1 in rebounds for 6th best in the NAC, 3.4 assists, which is 9th best in the NAC, while shooting 47.3% from the field, 38% from the 3, 16th best in the NAC, 84.3% from the free throw line, which is 5th best in the conference, and 92nd best in the NCAA Division uh, III. In, in 15 games, he scored double digits in all but one. Um, he has three double doubles on the season. He has a game winner again on the road at Aurora. Yes, he is the best player on one of the top teams in the conference. And if you look at the history of conference, it's usually who's been conference player of the year has been, you know, leading scorer on the conference term, conference champion. Uh, but he's also proven throughout the year that, that he is one of the best players in the conference. And if you look at what he does uh, for Wisconsin Lutheran, you look at the games, he's a stat sheet stuffer. He's not just a scorer. You know, he's he's seven plus rebounds a night. He's over three assists. Um, he's shooting it really well from the field. Um, he gets a lot of attention um, from opposing defenses, but he does a lot for them. Um, even games where, you know, he, he's had some of his low scoring games, which hasn't been often. You know, he's had the 14, 15 points games. You know, his assists are, are pretty high. Uh, his rebounds there, so he does it all, and he fills every category. Um, but the biggest thing that he also does is he also provides leadership. You know, he does a great job with that. If you watch the games, you can see that he has an impact on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, he's not one that gets a ton of steals, but he he makes a lot of plays, and he usually finishes them with rebounds. And again, he's one of my, in my opinion, one of the four uh, legit NAC Player of the Year candidates. Uh, Wisconsin Lutheran is currently in a three-way tie for first with an 8-2 and two record, uh, the same as CU Dub and Benedictine. Speaking of Benedictine, uh, my next player, NAC Player of the Year candidate, uh, 6'7 senior forward Eric Grigo, uh, who's averaging 17.9 points per game, which is second best in the NAC, um, 8.7 rebounds, second best in the NAC, and 92nd best in NCAA Division III, uh, 1.7 assists per game. 64.5% from the field, second best in the NAC, and 11th best in all of the Division III. Um, shooting 28.6% from the three-point line, 68% from the free throw line. Again, 14 out of 15 games, he's scored in double digits, along with six double doubles, which is the 59th most in the NCAA Division III. Um, Go-to guy for Benedictine. Now, I say this next part... Um, because it's kind of underappreciated, but usually when you're the other team's best player, you know, kind of the mindset is, is you can't afford to be in foul trouble, and you got to have your floor on the floor at all times. And the biggest part about this this young man, I feel like, is he's not afraid to to give it up for his teammates. You know, he he takes charges. Um, he he fought back from an injury that he that he. Um, had last uh, at the end of last year uh, to come back has not missed time, and and again he's he's the best player, the one of the top players, go to guys uh, for a team that's eight and two in the NAC um, has been ranked top twenty five for a few weeks, still up there receiving votes. Mm -hmm. uh, so six seven Eric Grigo, senior forward uh, from Benedictine, my third potential NAC player of the year. Um, no surprise here, 6'8", senior forward from Illinois Tech, Max Hizataki. 17.7 points per night, per game, uh, fourth best in the NAC, 12.8 rebounds per game, first in the NAC, and third in NCAA. Uh, two assists per game, 1.3 steals per game, which is 12th best in the NAC, 1.5 blocks per game, first in the NAC, and 48th in NCAA Division Three. 55.4% from the field, 5th best in the NAC, and 84th best in Division Three, Shooting 40% from the three-point line, 50.5% uh, from the free throw line. 14 of 15 games, he scored double digits. 13 double-doubles in 15 games, 3rd best in Division Three. Go-to guy. And yes, 
IIT's record is a little bit lower than than what we had expected. Is you know going into the season, they were NAC tournament runners up. They were finished tied for fourth last year. Uh, returned quite a bit, but it's not because of the lack of production from from Max. You know the guy fills it up every night. Um, opposing defenses are are geared towards stopping him, and he gets a lot of attention. Uh, but he he's produced night in and night out. Uh, you know, not that this determines player of the year, but if you go on social media and look up his dunk uh, against Lakeland, it, it's impressive. You know, the kind of talent, athleticism that he has in the NAC shows what type of talent we have from top to bottom. Uh, you know, it's. You know, I'm glad I do not have to figure out a way to slow him down anymore. Uh, but yes, he, he's a go-to guy. He's produced um, big-time rebounding numbers, uh, a handful of games with 15-plus rebounds. Um, again, he, he's expanded his game where he's handling the basketball a little bit more uh, from 15 feet and in. Um, he can shoot it. Yeah, he's shooting 40% from three. Not a lot of attempts, but again, he you got to respect him out there. Uh, but anytime he gets in the post, Every other shot, over every other shot's going in. So he, he's another, he's my third Knack potential player of the year. And then my fourth one. You know, you can, you can take it for what it's worth. Uh, watch film. Read the the captions after games. But 5'9 Junior from Rockford, Brandon Emmerich is my fourth uh, legit Knack player of the year candidate. Um, he's averaging 16.7 points per game, seventh best in the Knack. Three and a half rebounds per game, 3.8 assists per game, 2.11 assist to turnover ratio, which is 10th best in the NAC and 73rd best in Division Three. Averaging a league best 3.27 steals per game, which is 5th best in Division Three. Shooting 43.7% from the field, 40% from the three point line, 9th best in the NAC and 79th best in Division Three. Shooting 67.6% from the free throw line. 13 of 15 games he scored in double digits. Tied his school record with eight steals in a game versus Marion this year. He's made plays on both ends of the floor, which was very evident in their most recent game at home against Dominican. He just makes plays. And, and he's he's a he's a guy that's taken on a new role this year. He, he's been the go-to guy for the Regents. Um, and, and he's exceeded expectations. You know, he's averaging almost 17 points per game, um, upping that. His steals per game, he's, he's produced there. And not even just his steals, but just his deflections. Um, for some reason, uh, he's, you know, inbounds pass after made baskets. Uh, he, had, he had two of them again on Saturday. And, it, you know, some people are surprised he continues to get them. I'm not. He, he just he has a knack for making those type of plays. Um, but he's, you know, he's kept the Regents in, in contention. Uh, they're two games out of first place right now with a big game tomorrow night at Wisconsin Lutheran. Um, and he's my fourth, uh, one of my four NAC potential players of the year. And, and all four of these guys have produced. Um, they've been the best player in, in pretty much every game that they've played in. They've made big plays on both ends of the floor. And the biggest thing, the biggest part of what they've done so far in, in – you know, 60% of the games, 15 games right now, is they've been consistent. Uh, you know, whether it's scoring, rebounding, assists, steals, blocks, you can pencil in pretty much what these guys are going to do night in and night out. And to me, you know, you have the stats, you have the consistency. Um, three of them are, are, you know, if the season ended today, three of them have their, their teams in the NAC tournament. So they're on winning teams. Uh, Max Izataki hasn't gotten much support help, um, but they're playing much better of late. And over these last 10 games in the NAC, um, they're going to be a tough out. You know, I don't count out IIT just yet. You know, they're they got Miles Curry back healthy. Uh, Milos is playing very well, so the the supporting cast is there. Uh, but then you know you still got to deal with Max. So you got four guys. Um, all leading respective teams. All of them are go-to players. They do more than just score. You know, so many people talk about points per game, but if you look at their stats and you watch film and you watch your games, they do more than just that. 
you know, they separate themselves because they're not just scorers, they're basketball players. Um, they all compete every possession, you know, Max with, with blocks on the defensive end, big rebounding nights, Rodnick with big plays, whether it's scoring or, or finding teammates, Brandon Emmerich, whether it's scoring, finding teammates, or just being disruptive defensively. Uh, then Eric Griegel, you know, he, he's done his whole entire career, all four years in the NAC. Um, I don't ex- expect anything different over the, the second part of the NAC conference, um, but he, he's been consistent making plays, big rebounding nights, consistent inside presence for, for Benedictine. Um, but all four of them have opposing defenses geared towards stopping them, and to still be able to put up consistent numbers night in and night out uh, is pretty impressive. So, again, the four NAC legit player of the year candidates halfway through the conference play uh, are 6'4", senior guard Andrew Brodnick from Wisconsin Lutheran, 6'7", forward from Benedictine Eric Rigo, 6'8", forward from Illinois Tech Max Hizitaki, and then 5'9", junior guard from Rockford Brandon Emmerich. So uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some feedback um, on there, expressing different opinions. Um Yes, there's a ton of talent in that, and it's shown that. Uh, you know, Jackson Smith's had big games. Jared Jers's numbers have been outstanding. Um, you know, with not just points, but also big rebounding numbers for a guard. Uh, then high assist totals. Um, Jordan Johnson for Concordia, Wisconsin, putting up big numbers night in and night out. Um, you know, guys. There's been a lot of guys that have made plays um, and have put up some big numbers. Uh, but again, this is just my opinion, and, and I'd love to get some feedback uh, on and hearing some other potential NAC player years. A lot of things could happen over the next five weeks. You know, guys could could drop, um, but that's the best part about NAC play is you got to bring a night in, night out. And all four of these guys had big games this week, and and I'm excited to follow them and and follow the next five weeks of NAC play um, heading into the NAC tournament. So um, I appreciate it as always, NAC fans. And if you need anything else, you want to talk about anything else, want me to cover anything else, uh, NAC men's basketball related, please let me know. You can follow me on Twitter and reach out to me as well. I'm Coach A. Webb. Um, have a great night.